Hello and welcome to Conquering Mouse Grab More with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today I just looked at the calendar and realized it's a week before our family's Christmas party and I want to make myself a Christmas table runner out of this pattern. So, and I imagine some of you wanted to make a little table runner for yourself as well. So what I did is I got some batting, I got all my pieces done for my table runner and I got some fabulous, fabulous cotton batik, or it's not a batik, it's a really, it's just a lovely weave of, uh, of red and black and gold. And I think this fabric's from Nigeria. It is just, just beautiful, beautiful fabric. So let's start with this table runner and making it very quick and fast. I'm using a, what they call a pillowcase method or an envelope method. It'll be fast and fun, and then I can start hand quilting it. Yes, I know I only have uh, seven days, but I can get it done. Okay, so let's get started, shall we? Okay, for this part, you're going to need a hot iron. Make sure everything is ironed well. Now, I've already cut this piece, and I've ironed in a crease that will be on the back that I'm going to be able to hand stitch down. And I made it a little generous. It's like about an inch. All my backing and batting have been cut for the size of my table runner. Right? So I have enough room with this being a little bit big. And so is the batting. But it works. It all works. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to lay this over by about an inch. Now, I'm just going to pin this in place as is for now just to make sure it stays put. Now, the other thing, oops, what I'm gonna do, let me see if I can't get this up. There, put one in the middle. Now, because this piece is, this piece here is a little bit big, I'm gonna start at one end, and I'm going to put my table runner face down. Right, that comes first. And I'm gonna line this edge up as close as I can to this. And I'm just going to start putting this, laying this up flat, as flat as it can be. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna quickly pin just around the edge of the entire piece, right back and, you know, just like this. I'm just gonna quickly pin it from, from this end to the, the far end. Because my petals, I've got five in my table runner, and I just want to make a rough cut out. Okay, now this is where you have to be brave. You get those fabric shears, and you're going to start at one end, and you're going to sit there, oh no, what is she going to do? I'm just going to cut around, make approximate, approximately the same, the right, the same size of this table runner because I've pinned it in place, right? So now I can just go whipping around with this and just, you know, trimming it as close as I want to. I don't have to get too fussy with it, right? That's the, the big thing. I don't have to get fussy with it. And I always use a beautiful red scrap in my, in my scrap, scrap stash. So that's good. Because remember, we've got the hole in here. Okay, now I'll just move this up and I'll come back when I finish trimming all the way around. Okay, now I like a batting on my table runners and here I am with a cotton batting. One side's rough, the other side's smooth and that's the side you want to go towards your the wrong side of your, your centerpiece your table piece. So now, what we're going to do uh, is we're going to flip this over like so and of course we've done this I don't know how many times now. <laughs> it's just like I haven't made one of these in a very very long time so I'm always getting a little just combobulated. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay this down. Now the cotton will stick to the fabric so what we're going to do is we're going to lay, pull out our pins on the front and move them to the back. 
That's all we're going to do now. And we're going to do that all the way around the, the piece, right? So, let, just like this. And now, you see there's a pin in here too, right? Like in this part here to hold it closed. That can come out. Just don't undo the edges, right? So, I will meet you back here once we finish going around and pinning this. And we can put through in a few more pins too. Okay, we've pinned all the way around and we put in a few extra pins here because what we're going to do now is just going to go a quarter inch all the way around here so we don't want to lose our points here. Like for the, I'll show you, the flower petal is here, right? So we don't want this point to disappear. So what we're going to do is just going to do a quarter inch around the entire the entire quilt. And I did put an extra pin here now to hold it closed because this is where we're going to turn it. This is our turning spot. So we're just going to head off to the sewing machine and I'm going to try and get my walking foot on. So I'll meet you at the sewing machine in a bit. Okay, I got my walking foot on and I've got some thread that is probably going to hopefully be able to see what I'm doing here. So anyways, I'm just lining up the edge of where I cut with the side of my walking foot. And it's kind of, because you're working blind, you can't see your quarter inch, really. And, you know, you could have perhaps made a... Okay, I want a little bit bigger stitch than that. Okay. And you pivot around so you get these angles. And what happens is it's going to, to once it's folded over, it's going to look like it's been curved. Okay. So, and you do have some straightaways that you can, you can work with. The red is a little bit bigger, so we, we um, pinned it just a little bit away from where we were working. There. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep, oops, I'm going to keep, oops, I'm just going to keep working around this and I'll meet you back when we're ready to flip it around. Okay, now that we've sewn all the way around, I'm going to show you one thing that I did do. I reinforced the opening. What I did was I went over this a couple of times, because if this is going to pop, it's going to pop here because it has the most fabric there. So what we're going to do now is it's your choice. You can either use shears to cut the, the batting off, or you can just use a rotary cutter. I'm choosing to use a rotary cutter, and... I'm going to try and trim, I have a couple of choices here. I can go with my stitch line and put it on the quarter inch, you know, put my, my stitching on the quarter inch and then trim from there. Or I can trim a little scant quarter inch this way. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that instead. Because that will give me nice tight, uh, a nice tight stitch line. So. Well, as I'm doing this, I'm just going to be working my way around with a scant quarter. I need a new blade on here. So, what I will do is I'll meet you back when it's all trimmed up. Okay, so we've trimmed all the way around. And now we're just going to make little tiny clips on the inside corners. I've got a scant quarter inch, so this shouldn't be too much problem for us to turn. And it doesn't take a lot of effort to put this little extra bit in there. You know, you do end up with a nicer finish. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oops. And there. And you only need really one. But do not cut the thread. Very important that you don't cut the thread that you've just sewn over. Otherwise, what happens is your seam will pop. Now, if you do happen to cut the thread just over, what you do is you just sew over it and go just a little deeper, right? And that'll cover that oops 
but if you like really cut into it, yeah, that's not good. And and this comes to come together really quick. And you don't go very deep because I've trimmed this so it's pretty shallow. Now once we flip it over, I'm going to use pin basting to do my hand quilting. You can do thread basting or free motion or whatever you like. You can put a binding on it if you want. But anyway, so here we are. Here we find our opening, right? And now we go to the far side and we push it in like this. And then we just gently work it out. Work it out nice and slow. And you can fiddle with it if you want at this point. Some people like to fiddle with it. And some people put a, a top stitch around the outside because your seam inside is really tiny now, right? So they just put a, a top stitch around it. I think that I might do that before I start hand sewing it or hand quilting it, but. So you just, you go around the edge and just pop out all those little corners and it's going to look kind of round, right? So. What you do and you kind of you just struggle with it for a bit I'm not going to uh, show you the top stitching today because some people like top stitching and some people don't and they're like oh I wanted to show you this before the little ones get their hands on it and it was covered with cranberry and gravy so so that's the one side pretty much and you would pr press it in place and make sure you know like I say you pop out the corners or the best you can but this does give it a, a really elegant swoop to the work it doesn't look like sharp it doesn't look like that point and it's actually easier so so let's get on to the other side get to the end pull it through just gently work through uh, and there we go and I'm just gonna start at the far end get my hand in there this is a five, this is what you do, the five petals will fit on our dining table with the leaves out, which we always have to have the leaves out at Christmas because there's people and food and dishes and we're just praying now that we don't get locked down again, but hopefully this will all work and if not, I'll have a beautiful table, table runner for next year. So here we go. So that's what it looks like before it's pressed so that's what it, you know like now you would you would uh, pin baste we're gonna just pin baste a bit and I've got pins now you can use smaller pins you can thread baste whichever but you do need if you're gonna hand quilt it you need to do some pin basting which I'm going to do I'm gonna hand hand quilt mine and we're just you know put a pin in the middle just to kind of keep it then you can also do a top stitch around the outside edge just to keep your edge nice and nice and curved. But it does. But this is it. This is pretty much where we're at. So I'm going to hand quilt as desired, or you can quilt as desired your tea mat or your table runner, and it should be good. Okay, so here we are. I gotta put a few more pins into it and make sure I hand sew up the back closing right but I'm going to um, quilt this and it shouldn't take me that long to hand quilt it is a fairly large table runner I will be top stitching around the very very edge just to keep it give it a little bit crisper look to it but and of course putting in very stylized leaves within the green areas with my hand quilting so what do you think I hope this made a lot of sense to you even if you're doing just one with three or just a tea mat, you know, this comes together really quick. This, this uh, pillowcase, I think it's called a pillowcase method, comes together very quick. And it's a really beautiful finish. You don't have binding to worry about and try and sew on and make sure it's all straight and all the rest of this. You are working a little blind, but my, my points, I haven't missed a point because of my cutting. Right, so I mean, I can get the cameraman to show you where a point a point is. You know, just the point is there, right? So 
you know, even though you're working blind, you can kind of peek in underneath and see where it is. But anyway, so here we are. We're done. Just got to get the hand stitches up. quilting done and we're good. I hope you have an amazing week ahead. And um, I hope you're not too rushed and stressed at Christmas time. There's lots to do. So you have a great week. Okay, bye. Hello everyone. Just a quick reminder. This is the quilt we're going to start doing our sew along in the beginning of December 2021. This is a beautiful hand pieced, hand quilted. Uh, this is a beginner quilt for hand quilting. This is also an intermediate if you're using a sewing machine. And we're going to start this one at the beginning of December 2021. So if you're watching this eight years from now, don't worry, it's a free pattern. It'll always remain a free pattern. Um, we had a lot of fun doing this with our students and we had a very enjoyable time. So if you like the videos and you like this challenge and you'd like to start a quilt, a quilt along, comment below, but like, share and subscribe with your friends. We are so happy that you're back with us if you're a, a subscriber, but if you're a new subscriber, please join. This is going to be so much fun. Okay, you have a great day. Bye.